Hello and welcome to Rhino's Ravens Review. I know I said I, pro I wasn't going to be doing a video so soon, but I feel like the news this past week has warranted this. And going forward, I think I will probably do a few more shows in between the draft. I feel like there will be something going on, but we'll see. And I just, I, I feel like singing... Ding dong, the Wicked Witch is dead. That's right, Greg Roman's gone. Now, while it feels like we want to be singing, who knows, the grass isn't always greener on the other side. Hopefully, the new offensive coordinator we do get will be better. So, keep your fingers crossed. As hopefully many of you heard, Greg Roman decided to resign now it wasn't a firing per se he did meet with the organization and him resigning was a result of these meetings so did they ask him to resign or or did they give him a chance to resign instead of being fired who knows as always, you can see here, I'm on BaltimoreRavens.com. Let's look through a few articles. You see Ryan Mink here, BaltimoreRavens.com staff writer. The headline pretty much says it all. They want to, the Ravens want to hold on to their identity, but be able to evolve. Now, what I take from that is they still want to be able to run the ball as well as they do with Dobbins and Edwards and potentially Lamar Jackson. Talk about his uh, what's going on with him and his contract and some options a little later. So essentially a three-headed monster at the running game. But still, you know, be able to put but points on the board. Maybe throw a pass to the wide receivers every once in a while, which they... Really haven't done too much in the Greg Roman offense. Not that the he had a lot of weapons to work with. You draft Brown and Brown's injured. And you draft Bateman and Bateman misses what? Three quarters of his time? Excuse me. So we'll see how who they go for. Let's look at an article here about potential candidates. This is written by... Mr. Kevin Eck, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Probably not. Now, I mean, it, it's a big thing to talk about even now, even though the postseason isn't even over yet. So, kind of take this with a grain of salt a little bit until, you know, until after the Super Bowl, really. I think, in my opinion, on the list of potential candidates, and not necessarily just this list, but, you know, in general, it's just, this was posted on a website, so, for some visual, the quarterback's coach for the Philadelphia Eagles, currently, anyway. If you've been paying attention to the league, Philadelphia the Eagles, their offense has really taken off. And that's with Jalen Hurts as quarterback. Now, he is a similar quarterback to Lamar Jackson. He can run. I think he may throw better. But potentially that is what weapons do the Eagles put around him and what plays, the play design and what plays are called in certain situations. So, but this uh, Brian Johnson, as as you can see listed here by Mr. Eck, 13 years between play caller and positional coach. So, that sounds right up our alley. Right, uh, right up our alley. John Harbaugh, if he remains a head coach, isn't, big on running an offense or defense, so he's not really involved in play calling. So, 
it it would be nice to have somebody that does have experience with that already instead of you know learning on the job, which is, is perfectly doable by whoever they pick. Position coach currently as a quarterbacks coach. That's, I mean that that's where all your money goes on the offense. So, I mean that really is who handles the ball the most on offense. Your quarterback. Maybe the center. But his only real job is to snap the ball to the quarterback and keep his keep himself in between defenders and the quarterback. So you see not only Jalen Hurts, but Johnson worked with Dak Prescott, who may not run as much as Lamar but definitely has that in his repertoire and has good throwing ability. Let's move on to another article. Tapping. Thank you. There was a season-ending press conference uh, a few days ago. Harbaugh made the comment let me uh let's let's go all the way down wait who, who wrote this article ryan mink frequent in my videos baltimore ravens.com staff writer let's go all the way down to the bottom where harbaugh is saying that jackson will be involved so it does seem like they want to keep jackson or at least they're telling everybody that they want to keep Jackson as of right now. Harbaugh says he's going to keep Lamar informed and is certain that in those conversations, Lamar will put his input in. Lamar Jackson is a tweeter, so I'm not going to get too much into his tweets, but he is for having a pro style offense. He did run it in college. So I guess the basic difference between a pro style and a spread is the plays are more complex in a pro style. They're typically under center. And a, pro, and a spread is more, it's designed to spread by spreading out the offense and therefore spreading out the defense and taking advantage of smaller, quicker skill position guys one-on-one -on -one with a defender. It is easier to learn, and that's why most high school and college organizations run them, because of the turnover with players is more frequent than in the pros. Let's talk about Jackson. We don't actually know what the Ravens are going to do yet. I still suspect that they'll do a franchise tag of some sort. So let me find where they explain a little bit about the franchise tags. You can see, oh, let me tell you who wrote this. Clifton Brown. BaltimoreRavens.com staff writer. Well, I'll find it again. <laughs> now they do have some time. About a month-ish. To decide. If they want to go the franchise tag route or not. So you can see here. The window opens up between February 21st. And March 7th. They haven't gotten a deal done by then. That is when they can put a franchise tag on. If they so choose. Now even if they put the tag on him. During that window. They still do have an opportunity. To do a longer term court. Uh, to do a longer term contract 
without Jackson having to play under the franchise contract. As you can see just below that, July 15th, to sign him to an extension. They put the tag on him. July 15th rolls around. They haven't come to an extended contract. Then that's it. Jackson's locked into playing the, on the franchise tag. Now there's a few tags that they can do. Exclusive and non-exclusive are the ones talked about here in this article. Essentially, an ex the difference. All right, exclusive tag. You place an exclusive tag on him on Jackson. He can either choose not to sign it and not play, or he signs it and plays under the tag. The exclusive one is more expensive, and because it's exclusive and more expensive, he can't go negotiate with other teams because in a non-exclusive franchise tag, he can go negotiate with other teams. In the non-exclusive tag, if the other team comes with an, office, with an offer, the Ravens have a chance to match the offer. If they choose not to match the offer, this new team gets Jackson. They, if this happens, this new team would get Jackson, and the Ravens would get two first-round picks for Jackson. Now there, there is a dollar amount involved. It's somewhat confusing, I think, but we'll just go with the exclusive. Exclusive one is more expensive. The non-exclusive one is less expensive. I don't know which one I really want him to use. I feel like the more money you give Jackson, the less money you have for other positions. Like, say, Queen is coming up on a contract. Peter, uh, well, I think Queen is like next year. Because Queen's still on his rookie deal, if I'm not mistaken. Peters, Marcus Peters. He's probably going to go to a different team next year. Quite simply because it's a rather large cap hit. And the other cornerbacks have been playing a lot for the past few years. Because Peters got injured. It's not necessarily his fault. It's not like the other guys were playing because he wasn't playing good. But I feel like they performed fairly well. We did have one uh, Fuller. I can't remember. Was it Kyle Fuller? I think that's his name. His first name anyway. Got injured early in the season. So hopefully he'll be back next year too to add to Worley and Stevens and Pepe Williams and there's another guy I think and I'm forgetting Armor Davis I think. I think they played fairly well. With more experience I think they'll play even better hopefully. But, uh, oh, Powers. Powers, too, I think, is a free agent. So, you have to play as a team in this game, right? You can't just throw all your money into a quarterback and then have no money for anybody else. You can't play with just a quarterback and a bunch of high school kids out there. You can't do that. So, I'm thinking that they should go with with the non-exclusive tag. I think most teams generally do. So, we, honestly, even if somebody does want Jackson, I, I wouldn't be that opposed to it. One, because I think Huntley played fairly well. 
And two, two first round draft picks sounds pretty nice to me. I mean, if you think about it, all these playoff teams, their first round picks would be in the second half of the draft, right? Of the first round, right? The later rounds. They're not going to trade. They're not, or not, not, it's not necessarily trade, I guess. They're not going to sign Jackson, right? They have a quarterback. That's how they got in the playoffs. I mean, potentially there are a few teams that may. But for the most part, any team that would want him would be in the earlier half of the first round, right? So you get, we would have our draft pick somewhere around 18, I guess, maybe 20. I don't know, I haven't really figured that out yet. And then maybe another one around 10. So 10, and, I mean, that's works for me. Draft you a quarterback there. But I think, yeah, I guess it's, oh man, it's tough to say. It's tough. What are they going to sign first? Comment below. How do you? What do you think the Ravens should do first? Do, they, do you think they should lock Jackson up, either with a tag or a contract, and then get an offensive coordinator, or do you think they should get an offensive coordinator and let that person help you decide what to do with Jackson? I will probably. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll just see how the how the how this off season plays out. I feel like. There is potential to have news worth doing a video for once a week. So, like and subscribe so you can be notified when I do drop a video for the Ravens. I am the Angry Rhino. Fly, Ravens, fly.